Welcome everybody, it's Ted Pedromo and this is Social Selling TV. You can find us every Thursday at noon on socialsellingtelevision.com, YouTube slash Social Selling TV and on my website at Ted Pedromo. And today our guest is Parker Winder, Winder who I met, gosh, it was a couple of years ago at a Frank Kern, we were in a Frank Kern class together, high ticket sales or something like that. But, Parker, it's great to see you. Ah, uh, good to see you too. And why I reached out to you because lately you've been doing some amazing videos on Facebook and it just really struck me as so authentic and you're just kind of like, you're just being so natural and just so open and authentic. Like, What, what prompted you to start those videos? Um man, I just want to help people. And this is just the problem. I mean, I'm like the worst ever at a few things. Not, I mean, like I've struggled with a few things and they've caused me to pull my hair out and uh, it's been some blood, sweat and tears, you know, to kind of pay the price. And like more and more, what I just see is like, there are so many people I, I, I kept it hidden because I didn't want people to realize and to find out that there was something wrong with me or, you know, and, and so I didn't want to, I didn't really want to talk about it. I was ashamed of it. I was, I was, I was embarrassed by it. I was, you know, it was like, I regretted that it was even true. I, I hated that it was even true. And, uh, and I realized that, you know, there's a lot of other people that actually just need exactly, exactly that. So it just blew my sales up. So I mean, <laughs> people who typically people who need sales and they're like, Hey, I need sales. I need to double my sales now. And I don't have more hours to do it. Those people are like, you know, they, I figured they needed me, you know? So you had these, you perceived as faults or weaknesses and you just started talking about them. It's kind of therapeutic in a way. So. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So that's, I run into that all the time. People are like, well, I can't do that. It's like, yes, you can. You know, everybody couldn't walk. They learned to walk. We learned to <laughs> yeah. Learn yeah. To do everything. Yeah. And, and you just, they just think they can't do it. Be, only because they just don't know there's a science to it. They think it's just this thing they can't control, you know? And that's what, that's what we tend to think. It's like, I'm not in control of that. It's almost like a wave. If I can catch that wave, it's great. I know I'm going to kill it. When I'm on that wave, I know when I'm on that wave, right? Because I can close pretty much everyone because I'm just there to serve them. It's easy. I'm not trying to sell them anything. And so I just have this sense of effortlessness in my sales. But when I'm not on that wave, uh, I'm just remembering the times when I was on that wave and I know what it's like being on that wave. So I'm so ashamed and, 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 and just, ugh, like, just, just regretful and just sad and, you know, mad at myself. Like, man, what is wrong with me? Why can't I get back there? I have to wait for that wave to come again. I don't have enough time to wait to, for that. You know, I got to get money now. And they think it's basically not in their control. And so it's very frustrating. They've tried everything. You know? so, yeah, They've every business everything. goes through peaks and valleys. We all go through times of in our life, we're really struggling. You think, God, I'm just, I'm a loser. I can't do anything right. And there's other times you're riding that wave. But, but you know you're not really a loser because you know you're dang smart. You know you're creative. You know you can be great because you, you've seen the glimpses of it before, but those glimpses are so short and so fleeting, you know, and that's the real problem. It's like, if, if I could solve that thing, man, then they realize, oh man, I actually, it's not even like that. It's like, I have to solve that thing because if I don't solve that, I mean, every day that goes by, it's just costing me, you know, maybe tens of thousands of dollars. It's just like, you know, what can solve that? Well, that wave isn't some kind of chance by happenstance. You just end up on it. You just weren't aware of the triggers that did it. And now that I've kind of gone through that, that valley and, and learned them, I still actually am learning to be honest, you know, but gone through, I've learned a few things about it that can explode people's uh, sales and businesses pretty quick. So. so it's not really solving anything. It's like 
going back to that feeling you had at one point in your life where you're on a high. Which is yeah, how immediate to get there. Just I actually had to create it. it. They say what they'll typically say to me is something like, Man, I had that. I know what you're talking about, but I lost it. I lost it. That's what they'll say. Yeah. You know? And I tell them it's it's you know, just just really slow down and look, did you lose it or did you stop creating it? Hmm. And when they see that, boom. It, things changed pretty much overnight. That's, I was just talking to a friend of mine before this call, which is really ironic because <laughs> he just retired from a job. He's 68, but he wants to keep doing his own thing. He's really gifted teacher and he's super smart He goes, I'm just trying to compete, but I see my competition is like 25 years old. What do I do? I can't compete against him. And then, then he kind of, the light bulb went off. He said, but people like Brian Tracy are like almost 80 years old and they're still out there doing it. I can do it. It's similar to that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Of course. It's, um, are you saying that they basically, they, they had this belief that they, that they couldn't do it because they were older and they didn't know they had that belief. They just, the world they saw just, it, it occurred to them like, I, like it's hard to do or I can't do it. Then they uncovered that specific belief. And once they realized it wasn't true, there was actually a step in there that you didn't mention. But what they did was they took responsibility for the, they, they actually, they, they distinguished that that belief was serving them with a very, a very comfortable, nice little payoff that they were getting. And that was that they got to lose the responsibility. Um, based on that belief like that's what it was really about avoiding responsibility once they distinguished that payoff then they could they were able to let go of that belief and it stopped holding them back and it's like oh the sales flood in right is well, that what happened with him i assume it probably would after after he realized something like that god the light bulb you could feel it through the phone literally <laughs> the light bulb went off yes I, I can do this there's nothing stopping me except me. Oh, that's what I live for. Once someone, when that light, when that specific light turns on and then the results happen right there. I mean, that's, that's, yeah, that's. Let's that's back up. We didn't world. explain what your business is. Talk about your business and, you know, the ups and downs you've had. I know you, you've gone through some ups and downs. Oh, I've man. Some ups and downs. We all have. Yeah, totally. Well, I started out in door-to-door -door sales. I was raised as a Mormon, so I went on a mission. And that's what we do on your mission is we go door to door and preach the gospel. Well, I mean, then it was like I got home from the mission and I was like, well, I'll go do door to door sales. You know, I'm good at that. So I started doing that just in college and then I dropped out. I'm like, no, sales is my area. I'm, I'm going to do sales. And so after about five years of that, I had this, I just would always be about average and a little above because I would work really hard. But I just blew up. I had a blowout year. I mean, just tripled my production one year to the next, not with learning any more sales training and stuff, but it was some stuff that I, I'm a very deep thinker and I got, I cracked a little code in my brain hmm. and my sales tripled. And ever since then I left the door to door sales industry and I just focus on helping people to do that same exact thing. And then I realized, oh, it's not necessarily even for door-to-door -door salespeople. Like my first clients, they were just door-to-door -door salespeople, friends of mine who wanted help. And I just would say, well, yeah, you could hire me. And then it was like, well, I'm not even knocking doors anymore because I'm just doing this full time. And then it was like, whoa, this is actually something. I, I stumbled on something way bigger than I even thought. There's a whole world of transformation here. You know, there's a whole, I got to go learn the science of this even deeper, not, not to just be able to do it inside my own brain, but actually how do I make it happen for inside there? What's the science that, that behind that and figuring that out? So it's just, I'm still on the journey and I'll always be on it. I will always be on that journey for the rest of my life and I'm only 30. So, but it has, yeah, but essentially I just help, I help people to just to do that. Just what I'm, I'm talking about. I guess that is my business, I guess you could say. So it kind of sounds like you help people get out of their own way. Essentially, yep. I help them see what they're not seeing. Yeah, it's all right here. <laughs> it's all right there, of course. Yeah, 
<laughs> it's not in the, it, I mean, the sales training and the technique and all that stuff's great. I suggest they go learn it because it's, it's all fine and great, but you know, there's a, there's a, there's a component to it. that's scientific and spiritual that is a lot quicker fix. So as you have been learning the science behind this and exploring this, what are some of the biggest limitations you see for people? Some of the, the ultimate, I can go straight to the, the ultimate one that it boils down to is they, it's like they, they live in a, they live in emotions their their dominant emotions where they live most of the time or too often is like a shame and like a, a re, like a regret or like a self hatred almost like an unacceptance of their self like man there is something wrong with me I do know that deep down and I ah, like what's what what is it like what's wrong with me what is it you know it's like that it feels kind of sometimes like depression but only because because they see the gap but only because of like what is really possible. My dreams are right there and I know for sure I would have them like that if I could just be this guy consistently, but I just can't like there's something wrong with me or like that, you know? Right. <laughs> and sometimes it's not like, Oh, there's something wrong with me. Sometimes it's like, oh, man, like, I, like what is it? I've been sitting here writing in my journal trying to figure out my own, you know, it's like, they, the problem is we can't see it in ourselves because it's almost in, pretty much impossible to do. You know, it kind of is. You, you, there's something that you're just not seeing. It's just something as simple as it's just literally something you weren't seeing. Well, not, nothing wrong with you at all, you know. They don't see it like that. So well, Yeah, we get the blinders on because we were raised by our parents and they taught us certain things and we yeah. kind of lived in a bubble. There's a survival mechanism going on, a lizard brain. And, it, and you're right, it, it puts blinders there and it has a job and it's to keep you alive. And so it just creates certain things that it makes up. And those things that it makes up, you believe them like they're you, but whether they're powerful or not. And so really, there's really, I mean, all pe the way to kill it in sales right now, like, boom, I got it. Like I'm on fire to create that is you got to really see people are creators. They just are. That's a fact. Now there's really only two types of creators. There's the conscious and then the unconscious. And there's two types of things that we create things that empower us or things that are powerful. And then things that disempower us or things that are not powerful. And when they just get the two of those flipped in any combination, whether they're, and some people are unconscious, but they're creating a way of being that's very powerful. Well, that's going to end up being someone who can go really far, but they're not going to be able to get the people below them to explode like them. They're not going to be able to clone themselves in their level of production. And so as a result, they start managing their people and then they get bogged down with the time and they can't grow their business any further than that. And then there's the other kind of people who are, they're, they're, um, they're conscious or they're unconscious about what they're creating, but they're creating something that's, um, that's not powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a whole other thing. And that's, that's a whole other issue. So just getting that distinction allows them to see, oh, okay, you know, this is, this is what, this is what I'm doing. And this is the result it's getting me, whether it's right or wrong. Is it powerful or not? Oh, it's not powerful. I could give it up. Like, oh, it's not even me. Once they realize, oh, that's not me. That's just a way of, they just see what they weren't seeing there. Boom. Right. You know? Yeah. Last weekend I was in San Diego. Ed Dale had a little get together we have digital magazines and we get together a couple times a year and there's only eight of us in the room and it was so powerful because we we're all sitting there we came from our bubbles we all work at home alone and we just start talking about stuff and they go well what if you did it this way and we're like oh god that was so much easier why didn't we think of that because we're sitting here like this <laughs> yeah Totally. So you help people fun. see other perspectives or just kind of get them out of their, their rut. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it, it has that effect very quickly of them getting out of their rut. Yeah. Because they just, yeah. I mean, 
yeah, they just get aware of something that they weren't seeing. That's it. I mean, you're right. So you're like so much more than a sales coach. It sounds like. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't really call myself a sales coach, but, but I'd say, yeah, I mean, that's my clients say they're like, I mean, yeah, I mean, to call Parker a sales coach would be like calling the Beatles a garage band or something, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you don't even teach selling. That just happens. Yeah. Right. Yeah, of course. Just like, I mean, if you're going to create something powerful in, in your marriage, you know, I mean, you got to be clear about what that is and, and aware, have that same level of awareness that, that you're not having right now, you know, or, or, or any relationship really professional, personal relationship, really, you know, so, so what are like two or three things people you could just say right now, here's how you could change right now. Here's how you could change. How could, right I, now. How could I double my sales in the next year? What would you tell me? Or how um, would you work with me? You wouldn't just tell me you'd have to obviously. Yeah. I could do. I could just find out, you know, like what's going on there. I mean, what's, what's the problem right now? there it looks like so it sounds like you know that are 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 double the sales possible and you just not like you feel like you ought like the market can hold that you can fulfill on it if you sell it everything's there it's just there's something missing that's that has that not happening and you're just unaware of what that is that yeah but my limiting belief probably yeah are you sure that they are i mean like in your case or or we could talk about i mean yeah we basically just find it you know we just go through and find what it is it's just a few questions you can pinpoint it pretty quick i just look at okay well if those sales are possible and you know that you're capable of it what's i guess yeah what what is in the way of it you know yeah so do people come to you and say uh, can you double my sales or triple my sales or do they come to you and say i'm no that's all it's usually like uh i need to sell more now <laughs> okay yeah it's like, I mean, I just have to sell more. It's just, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, I shouldn't even, I could be so much further. I've been trying to solve this for years. I've tried everything. And now I'm at the point where something recently happened in my life where I just know that I, I, I have to solve this once and for all because learning more sales track tactics, all sales training, all this other great stuff, it takes up my time and it doesn't create more sales. And it teaches me more knowledge, but it does bogs me down because I don't need more knowledge. I know I don't need more knowledge. I know when I'm in that place and when I'm not in that place. And when I'm in that place, I'm making money big time. When I'm not in that place uh, and I can't create it and I don't know how to create it, it's like an anxiety that just eats at me. And I, it gets in the way of me enjoying my time with my family. You know, yeah. I can't I go enjoy my time with my family if I know that when on Monday I'm going to go back and I won't be able to close these people. I, what usually happens to, they look right back in their recent, um, history just back just a few weeks even and they see a deal that just went through their fingers like just fell through their fingers that they knew they should have had they should have had the person had the money it would have been easy it would have been great they would have been a perfect client they wanted it and it didn't happen and they're just like if that would have happened i would be able to go on this cruise with my wife and kids i would be able to go on this this vacation and enjoy it but because i that didn't happen now i'm gonna be not enjoyable on this family vacation. That's going to be a waste too. So it's like something like that typically. And then it's like, I have to get this solved right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cause they could lose their job if they don't meet their quota or all kinds of things. Yeah. 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 So they come to you at that that's, the that's when they... moment. I'm like, I need uh, like, I'm ready. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. You know, I, I know I need the help and I'm ready. I'm like, I'm willing to see now what I'm not seeing that's costing me so much money because of my own dang pride. And that's what it is. If I'm, if I'm honest, it's like, it's my own dang pride of wanting to be right. And it is getting in my way from seeing something. And that thing is costing me so much. And I'm just willing to just give it up, you know? Uh, and that honesty, when they get there, man, they're so easy to help. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So easy to help. I've run into that a lot where people are just like, they keep buying more courses. They want to learn more, learn more, and they're not doing. And it is the more courses they buy, the further in debt they go, and they just keep struggling. And then there's like just 
the that's course nice. costs in a thousand bucks or a hundred bucks or a 500, whatever that costs, that ain't even a big deal. That's fine. I mean, that it's the time that they're wasting, not actually getting that stuff implemented. That's the real cost of it. that once they realize that, then it's like, okay, you know, but yes, I mean, there's a lot of great, a lot of great courses, but no matter how good any course is until the individual experiences an identity level shift. Yeah and who they are and who they see themselves as, then no change will, no amount of knowledge will matter. And once they have, once they get that, then all the previous knowledge they've acquired becomes so much more valuable because they actually implement it and do it, you know, but the only reason they haven't in the past is because they just weren't being who they needed to be to do that. And they're trying to fix it at the doing level and it doesn't get fixed there. It gets fixed at the being level who they are you know, and how they see themselves. So we literally just create that. We create it. Yeah. That's, design that's, it and create it because that's it's powerful. That's exactly how it works. Yeah. I can see that. Cause you just think, Oh God, I got it. I'm not smart enough. I gotta learn more. I got to practice this. The mind says that. Yeah. Yep. Totally. That's, that's just a lizard brain doing its job. It's producing thoughts. And those are exactly the kinds of thoughts. Yeah. I got it. I got to learn more information and they find themselves in a habit of just absorbing information. So they're in an intaking of information mode, which is a more feminine way to be. Yeah. Whereas when they're crushing it in the business, it's more of that masculine energy, whether they're a woman or a man, doesn't matter. Masculine energy. And they're in that feminine and they haven't gotten out of that feminine into that masculine. And for them, it, it even looks hard or it even looks challenging or, or hard to do sometimes. And so once they see what they're not seeing, then it's like, right. I just started reading a really good book this weekend. It's called Pitch Anything. And it talks a lot. As your lizard brain is what the first thing. If you're pitching someone, trying to sell them something, your lizard brain is dumb. And it's really about fight or flight. You know, do I have to, you know, a really dumb part of the brain. And if you don't get past that, if you don't address that, you don't get to the rest of your brain. It sounds That's like it. this is a lot of what you're doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is a science to this. They're now figuring it out. And, you know, people like me who have thought for years something's wrong with me. <laughs> I mean, we're on the, the leading edge, the bloody edge of this thing because it's, there's an awakening that's happening in the marketplace, in, entrepreneur, for, in the business world. And those who are at the front, on, at the beginning end, are dominating because they're bringing a freshness to the market, a, an authenticity, a newness, a fire that is very unique. And anyone, anyone who does it consciously, they know what I'm talking about. The, they're the ones who do it unconsciously and they're just like super successful. They don't really know how, you know, and then the ones who understand both, like who are cursed with my curse, um, help them to get from one to the other. But I call it a curse because it's in a way a curse, right? But it's also a really amazing blessing too i mean my clients are amazing and so many people are i mean yeah. such good people out there but they're not making the impact that they could and they you know they 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 know it deep down it, it's kind of it's kind of sad you know but we need more of us we need more of us out there we need to put it out there and share it and and spread it because the world needs it and it's time so yeah yeah we're all just most people live such a fraction of what they could in life they just go to work nine to five go through that routine make a little bit of money just get by but once you unleash this it's just so powerful yeah so this is something that can be learned there is hope for all of us right <laughs> Yeah, it can absolutely be learned. It can be, it kind of, you know, there's two ways to learn it. You know, you can basically, uh, you can go learn all the science of it, you know, and do, do it that way. Or, you know, someone who's learned the science of it can teach you the science of it. Then you can just kind of do it on yourself and, and get there. And that's, that's like, you know, I've got something like that that I do. And then there's, there's another way that's just a lot faster where it's literally like we just talk about it and it just shows up to you. Cause you don't have to even know all the science if you don't want to, it doesn't matter. All of the, all that makes a difference is that that individual sees it inside themselves. So I turn them inside. So like with private clients, turn them inside and get them to see it. And then boom. But you know, you can also teach it to your people too. 
and get your whole people to do it. And then, so that's really when you get a great leader who is committed to their whole, pe- all their people just being off the cutting edge. They want to teach it to them, but then they want their people to see them as the leader. Then that's, I mean, that's, that's a really cool leader and a really lucky. I mean, that's, that's where your employees are really lucky to work with you then because yeah. they never will want to leave. Cause like I get something from him or from her that's more than money. I get money too, but you get something way more. I'll work with that person till the day I die. Well, yeah, that's because they're that kind of leader. They not only know how to do it for themselves, but they can empower you to do it for yourself. And yeah. So you come in and do, that's the do real, group coaching. That's the real teams? Fun. Yeah. That's the real fun. I start with the leader. Yeah. You start with the leader, but that's typically on teams where it's a hundred percent commission. You know, those are the best for that high, you know, high end, team 100% commission or their or business owners or something but yeah yeah it's been great watching you over the last couple of years just really evolve into this you know what's funny is um you remember that time when we went surfing with frank were you at that event no uh, i wasn't at that one you were at the one in uh, la jolla yeah we were sitting out on the back of that. Yeah. I remember that. It was kind of cold. Yeah. Was right. Foggy and cold. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Okay. So I was in a hot tub recently, but I was on a double date with my wife and, uh, and she had brought her friend who brought her husband. And so I'm like, you know, I meet this guy and I told him, I'm like, you remind me of Frank, a friend of mine, Frank. He's like, Frank who? I said, Frank Kern. He's like, you know, Frank. I'm like, yeah. He said, I said, are you some kind of a writer or something? And he's like, yeah, I am. And I just kind of was curious about it. I started asking him, like, what kind of writer? And he's like, he starts answering it. Literally, I couldn't figure this guy out for like an hour. An hour later, I said, so you're telling me that you write stuff, and when people read what you write, their life changes just because they read it? And he said, that's and so what ends up happening. I wouldn't normally explain it like that, but that's what happens. And I said, you need to write something for my people, man. You got to write something for the world. And so we put it together. I said, write it. And he did it. And I didn't have any intention when I told him that, that that was going to be an Amazon bestseller. But once he did it, it hit the Amazon bestseller list like a week later. And he, and he actually, I even tell people you can go grab it on Amazon, but it's, he tries to give me credit. So he has my name as the author. I'm not the author. That's the work that came about through the mixture of us. He's the writer. He's the writer. And so I said, you're writing the forward and you're going to let him know that you're the one who wrote this thing. And he's like, no, I want your name as the author because he's just like that. So I, I say he's the, one of the best writers in the world, but he put this kind of down into a, just a little teeny tiny taste. But that's the biggest complaint of it is that it's been too short, but we'll, he'll, he'll do more of it. But um, that's a good book. It's called Real Magic, The Art of Creating a Life and Business that Work Effortlessly. Cause there is a magic to it. There yeah. is a very, a magic to it. It feels magical, you know? Yeah. Integrity is what makes it work in real life. So it's called real magic, but there is a, there is a magical sense to it. That's awesome. I love when I coach people, I'm a certified coach and I coach people and they have these kind of breakthroughs and it's just such a great feeling, isn't it? Yeah. And now you're impacting people with a book you didn't even write. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Now well, that's great. So what's one tip we could leave our viewers with? How can they get started on this journey of changing? Other than contacting you. <laughs> um, look at, look at what you want and look at, like, and you don't have it. And the only, you got to get the, the only reason you don't have it is not because you're wrong or anything wrong with you at all. You simply haven't done what was required yet. That's all. And it doesn't mean anything at all other than you haven't done what was required. Um, and it's about like, who would I need to be to, to go do that? And, and there's somewhere in there where you just don't see yourself as that person. And so you have this brain that's designed to keep you how you see yourself because it's survival. It's so strong. 
And so if you see yourself as someone who's not that person who, who can go do what's required, then you won't, you won't ever really get there because it'll always feel like two steps forward and one step back. Mm -hmm. So if I could help you without having to help you one-on-one, -on -one, what I would tell you is just distinguish where that's happening and just notice it for what it is. Don't judge it. Don't nothing. Just notice it. Right. And and love yourself and forget about yourself and go serve people. That's it. So when you're kind of feeling go down do it, and go do what you say you're going to do and go serve people and just, you know, yeah. So just notice our times when you kind of hit the valley, you feel like, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. Just notice it, forgive yourself, move on and go help yeah. someone. Yeah. Essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that those are thoughts that are getting produced by a lizard brain who's doing its job. But really you can, there's two ways you can, you can examine those beliefs and see that they're not true, or you can just see yourself as that person. And then you'll notice a lot of those counter thoughts will just kind of go away because the lizard brain's job is to keep the individual consistent with how they see themselves. But some people don't see themselves as that kind of person. And so therefore, they're dealing with all that cognitive dissonance, anxiety, and shame. And what you, what you can really do if you want to start the process is that book would be great, real magic, but you've got to take full responsibility for creating yourself as that person. Then it's easy to see yourself as that person when you literally create yourself as that person. Right. And creation happens by simple declaration and integrity say who you're going to be and be it and say who you're say what you're going to do and do it it's simple right it's very simple it's the simplest art and science that there is and the hardest at the same time <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 a game for big boys but it is a game that yeah. lizard brain just stops us in our tracks every time right <laughs> <laughs> it's doing its job keeping us alive <laughs> yep well, this has been yeah. great, Parker. So how can people get a hold of you and work with you if they want? I try to keep a nice, easy schedule. I'm just on Facebook. Um, but they grab that book and go to my website and connect with me. They go over to Facebook, send me a message. or um, I'll, you know, I'll post things up every now and then. Like here, you can get a free chapter of this book or we can just give you the book. I mean, it's like eight bucks or something on Amazon. But um, just hit me with the questions that, uh, that you're having on when you go to apply what I said and you kind of run into something, hit me with a question. Then I can just kind of, I'll just straighten it out for you. You're just like, Hey, try this. Let me know how that works. So it just, yeah, that's an easy way. If anyone has any questions about any of that stuff, you know, like where they're running into problems, just hit me with the question. I'll just do whatever I can to help. Okay. So Parker Winder on Facebook or is it parkerwinder.com? Is that yeah. your website? Parkwinner.com, Parkwinner on Facebook. Yeah. Cool. Hey, thanks if nothing for nothing else. Read that book. Yeah. Thank this you. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love what you're doing on here. Just like helping entrepreneurs, getting the message out as many places you can. And I've always, I've always known, even from Brian, from the day I met you, uh, there's a, a love in you and a, desire to help and contribute that is it shines through and it I just it always impressed me and so anytime I can talk to you I I really appreciate it and so thank you all right I'm glad we connected again and let's definitely keep in touch cool all right okay and people you can watch the replay of this on social selling television.com and youtube.com slash social selling tv thanks Parker Talk soon. For more free training, visit socialsellingminute.com.